A gobo is used in the film industry to create patterns or textures from a light source. This is done by placing a stencil in front of a light source to partly mask the light. This effect is commonly used in CG to create light dappling effects. For example, when light passes through water ripples and cast shadows on the riverbed below. We can recreate this effect by using our position and normal passes and relighting them in Nuke. This 3D scene was created in Maya, but the technique is the same if you're using a blender sequence. The only main difference is channels will have slightly different names and setups. In my scene, I have two sequences. On the left is my EXR rendered straight from Maya, and on the right is a pre-comp MOV of the same scene that I've graded. You don't need a pre-comp for this, just the EXRs straight from 3D with a normals and points pass. Create a shuffle node, select P from the input drop-down menu and plug X, Y and Z into the corresponding RGB. Create another shuffle node, select N and do the same again. Create a positioned points node. Plug the first input or arrow into your image sequence, then position, the I named P world, and lastly, the normals. Then hit one while points to position is selected to view in 3D. Add a scene and a camera. Connect the camera to your 3D scene by checking read from file, then selecting the file icon. Make sure your camera is set up to the same FPS as your 3D scene. Add a scannerline renderer, plug into the camera and scene and connect a viewer. If your 3D point cloud is rotated or not facing the right way, this is because the position pass was not set up correctly in 3D. But don't worry, you can fix this in Nuke very quickly. I have made a short video explaining how. I cover how to fix this problem with both Blender and Maya pipelines. If your scene is set up correctly, then your 3D point cloud and 2D image sequence should line up. You can check this by connecting your viewer to the scanner line renderer, selecting 2D image output and hitting 2 on your keyboard. Hover your mouse over your viewport, click W. And this will show both side by side. Then scroll through and make sure they are lined up throughout the shot. Create a 3D light and plug into scene. Change light type in properties to spot. Jump into your position to points and make sure your display and render are set to textured, otherwise they won't receive 3D lights. Rotate and place your light in 3D. Tab in the viewport is the shortcut key to toggle between 3D and your 2D output. For this, I started with a reformat node set to 8K, then plugged in a noise texture. Set type to turbulence, then I brought the size down to 20 as my light and texture will be quite far away. Bring lucinarity up, take gain down to zero and bring gamma up. Next, we can animate the Z pass with a simple expression. Right click in the Z value or hit the equal sign to enter Nuke's expression menu. Type in frame, forward slash 50. This animates the Z value by one every frame divided by 50. Check the animation is working. Next add a shuffle. Plug the input red channel into the output alpha channel. Create a card, switch over to your 3D view, connect output into your scene and input animated noise texture. Scale, rotate and position card. Jump into your light properties, click on the shadows tab and select cast shadows. From the shadow mode drop down menu select clipped alpha. Select RGB.alpha in output mask. Make sure the texture card is not in front of the camera. Then we should have something that looks like this. You might need to adjust the size and position of card to get a result you are happy with. Next, adjust the point size until you're getting a result that you are roughly happy with for the light mask. I normally find somewhere between the values of 1 and 3 work for me. You can also increase the point detail, which will give you a more refined mask. However, this increases render time and slows down your scene. I tend to not increase it past the standard settings of 0.5. Or, if I do need more detail, increase it at the end so my scene doesn't get too bogged down. Next, we need luminance to influence our alpha channel. To do this, create a shuffle node underneath the scanner line renderer. In the properties menu, switch the input red channel to the output alpha channel. We can see there is now an alpha channel if we toggle A in the viewport. I next added a multiply node, switch the channel to alpha and brought up the value, then a blur to smooth out the mask. If we look at our merge output, we can see a pattern now on our coral. It doesn't look like light yet though, so we're going to need to make some adjustments to our gobo effect. I added a pre-mop node and added another shuffle node, but this time I shuffled out the blue channel into the alpha instead as there's a lot more blue luminance in the shot and I wanted the effect to be stronger. Finally, I added a color correct, increased the gain, and we can now see the gobo effect is working as it should be in the merge output. Now we have the effect working, we can add additional color corrects to adjust the brightness. Then maybe add some glow. Make sure you add this after your pre melt node. Adjust your tolerance, brightness and size. I usually like to use two glows as I find this gives better results. Finally, I added another color correct node just to adjust the color. If you click on the four icon above gain, you can separate your RGB channel and control independently. So this is how the effect came out. 
It looked a bit intense for my taste, so I adjusted some settings, added a vignette and a lens distortion, and this was the final result. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this was somewhat useful for you. If you have any questions about this, then leave them in the comments and I will do my best to help. Also, if you have any requests for future videos or you just want to say hi, I'd love to hear from you. Happy compositing, and I hope to see you in the next video.